So for someone who's new to system identification, what would you recommend as the best way to start, both in understanding of concepts and in using the toolbox? Yeah, I think that, uh, as I said, it's, it's very important to have hands-on experience with the, the algorithms. And that's why you should, when you learn this, this subject, when you learn system identification, you should do it in, in uh, close co uh, contact with playing with real data. So I think in the toolbox there are a number of demos that are quite suitable to start with. Go through them and see how can you build models, what is the basic concept and how is the fitting done. And once you see that, you start to understand what is your potential. Take some time, but let let do demos and use your own data to see what 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 can what what can be done in MATLAB, in, in the toolbox. That is that is much better than just reading about it. So, how do you get started on a new problem? What identification method do you use? <laughs> yeah, uh, you see, there is a thing called in, in the GUI called uh, Quick Start for both the data and for 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 uh, models. And basically what I do myself when I get a, get a new set of data, I do what is in the quick start command. Basically, you, you first detrend your data, you split them to validation and estimation data, and then you estimate models, simple models, arcs models, enforced models, uh, using the estimation data. And you look at the result by compare plots on the validation data. And that gives me a feeling, is it a difficult problem or is it, is it a simple problem? And then I continue based on what, what I see there. So I think that quick start kind of embodies what the, how, I, how I approach a new problem. What's the most common mistake that people make that keeps them from getting good results with system identification? Well, I think there are two mistakes that the unexperienced uh, identifier do, do. One is that you don't understand the, the value validation data. If you, yes, if, if you evaluate models on the, the data that you use to, to estimate the models, you get fooled by the, 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 by the very good fit that you see in, in the uh, compare plots. So you must have validation data to check on independent data set how good your model behaves. And the second big mistake of new cameras is that not to have sufficient excitation in the data. It's very common in industrial practice to step responses. And that's, that's visual and very good intuitively to work with step responses. At the same time, it's not very informative. So if you can make one step up, why don't take one step down and one step up again now and then? So you have a much, much more exciting uh, input and you get much more information. You get, the noise becomes more redundant and you have a better situation. So that is, that is a, a common mistake, I would say, to just too little I I excitation in, in your input. What are the differences between linear and nonlinear system identification? Well, <coughs> linear and nonlinear, uh, that's a different, two different worlds. Uh, the linear world is uh, structured, well behaved, and you understand it quite well what happens. Nonlinear is everything except that. The, 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 actually, the term nonlinear is a negative definition. Somebody said that nonlinear systems is like non elephant zoology. So how do you define it in an area from a negative definition? So the, the nonlinear world is much more difficult in control design and in what have, what have you, but also in for estimation. So if you have a data set that can be well described by a linear model, and you have clear, clean data with, with a sufficiently exciting, I would say that you get a good linear model with, more, with reasonable efforts pretty, pretty soon. If you need nonlinear non-linear models, either you have must, must have some insight into the nonlinearity, or you must have very good excitation in the areas of the, of the operation re region that you need to cover in your nonlinear model. And then you can perhaps, if you're lucky, do well with nonlinear black box models like neural networks and so on. So it's a very big difference in, in, in difficulty. So some people think that system identification toolbox is really for people who have a PhD in controls or took a graduate level course in system identification. What would you tell those people? Can they use the toolbox even if they don't have a PhD? Of course, the toolbox is written for people who don't understand <laughs> the details of it. The point of having a user-friendly code is that you should be able to use it without understanding everything behind it. 
uh, I think that if you think that the uh, it's complicated to, to understand what's going on, I consult with the demos that are comes with the code. And I think in many cases they, they will be uh, illuminating enough for you to pick up the basic ideas.